Uh, tonight we are talking about life insurance and critical illness insurance. And tonight joining me is Gord Henley. He's CFP of, and uh, owner of Henley Solutions. And uh, so if you have any questions about critical illness, life insurance, uh, you can give us a call here at 613-728-1001. And so first, I guess we're going to talk about some critical illness. Uh, it's not usually something that's talked about a lot, but is very important. Uh, so maybe we'll just start off with the basics of kind of what is critical illness insurance. Yeah, thanks for having me on today, Andrew. No um, critical illness insurance is something that I'm a big believer in. Yeah. Um, the basics of critical illness insurance, it's a legal contract entered into by an individual with an insurance company where the insurance company agrees to pay a lump sum tax-free to that individual if they are stricken with a covered condition. Right. In exchange for that benefit from the insurance company, there is a cost, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, how much it will cost you will depend uh, greatly on the coverages that you choose and the different riders or privileges attached to the policy. Right. Okay. Um, so what are some of the benefits of having a critical illness insurance? Like why should someone look at having that coverage? Yeah. Um, the, the primary benefit is the large tax-free lump sum that is paid to an individual. Um, if I think about the emotional side of it, um, that lump sum is coming to you at a time when you're probably uh, not feeling very well. Mm -hmm. um, aside from your illness, it tends to be a dark period in people's lives right. when they are diagnosed with something. Having the ability to protect yourself or, um, or having the ability to offset some of the financial damage can actually be an uplifting moment in that time period. So really, uh, who should own it? In my mind, uh, there's no one that I know, individual that I know, yeah. who is immune from getting a critical illness. So it's really something that could apply to anyone. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's a good point about uh, being at a dark time because even though you stop working, the bills don't stop coming in. And yep. if it's something very serious like cancer or a heart attack, you need to take an extended time off from work to recover, uh, treatment, etc. So. Um, Sometimes what you have at work, if you have group benefits, it just isn't sufficient enough to, to satisfy that. So, um, group benefits do tend to be, um, to be smaller in yeah. their face values. The common amount that we would see for critical illness attached to a, gr a group plan would be 25000 Right. The other problem with that is that it's not portable. So it is only going to be in effect as long as you are with, uh, with that current employer or with that current plan. Yeah. And if you do have a decline in health, um, and you then leave that employer, you may not have options to, uh, to get critical illness insurance. Right, exactly. Okay. Um, so who do you typically see making the, uh, buying these kind of policies? Um, like a lot of insurance products, there's a, uh, there's a broad range of individuals. Um, myself, people who will sit down with me, um, I do see trends along gender lines. Um, yeah. Females seem to initiate conversation um, about uh, purchasing critical illness or yeah. fact-finding on what exactly critical illness is and how it might relate to them. Mm -hmm. um, self-employed uh, professionals or semi-self-employed uh, semi uh, professionals. Yeah people who may not have uh, substantial benefits through uh, their package, but they, uh, they do earn command quite a high salary. Mm -hmm. And business owners. Um, yeah. Business owners uh, are waking up to the fact that a critical illness goes beyond just uh, their personal life. It's an impact to their business and the people who rely on them for, uh, for their salaries yeah. and are taking steps to, uh, to offset that risk by purchasing critical illness policies. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so say someone does have a critical illness, they have that policy in place, uh, how do they make a claim? How does that, how um, does that go? Yeah, so the claim for uh, process is relatively straightforward. Yeah. Um, you do have to be diagnosed within North America. Right. Um, that is the clause in the majority of the policies. If you were in a European hospital, I'm sure you could get a, an exemption. Mm -hmm. They are not going to let you go to a, a medical practitioner outside of that reach right. and receive your diagnosis there. The reality is it is a large lump sum of money and they want, uh, they want to ensure that the medical, uh, the medical care you're, tr you're receiving is, uh, is accurate. That is a, sorry to interrupt there, but that is a good point because I don't know if there's a lot of uh, a trend of people doing uh, uh, medical vacations where they're going for the yeah. purpose of 
dental work or other uh, surgeries, et cetera, because it is less less expensive in other parts of the world. So you know, to to your point, if you do have a critical illness policy, you do go outside the country and get diagnosed, and that might cause a conflict there. Yeah. So it is fine to seek, and I should make everyone that I was listening at home aware, it is fine to seek your treatment in another country, mm -hmm. and you can seek your treatment outside North America, right. outside Europe. That's perfectly fine. But for the actual diagnosis, because right. the insurance company is relying on that diagnosis to um, determine whether you have hit the uh, benchmark for a claim to be paid, mm -hmm. they do want that to meet certain uh, certain standards. Right, exactly. And yeah, by keeping it in that North America uh, window, that that lets them feel like they have a little more control right. over that. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so once you are diagnosed, um, the other kind of I'll say catch with a critical illness is there is a survivorship clause where if you are diagnosed, it's not that it pays out immediately on the day of diagnosis. Right. It is a 30 day waiting period. And then on the 31st day, that's when you become eligible with most policies to receive right. your, uh, receive your benefit payment. Right. So it's all, it's important just having that policy in place, but actually understanding how it works, I think is, is a big uh, thing too, because there are some things you need to watch for such as a 30 day, waiting period after diagnosis. Yeah. Um, and so let's say you are diag someone is diagnosed, say diagnosed with a cancer. Uh, they've passed the 30 days, so day 31 they get their check. So what can they do with that, with that money? Is it taxable, is that money? It is, it is a tax-free payment. Okay. Um, you've bought the policies generally with your, with your after-tax dollars. Right. So when you do receive the benefit, that comes to you tax-free. Um, what to do with the money really varies, and it's an individual choice at that stage, honestly, yeah. Andrew. Um, a lot of people will seek treatment um, in, in, a, uh, in another jurisdiction other right. than Canada. Yeah. Um, it's no secret that you know, the healthcare system in Canada is under strain. There can be waiting, uh, long waiting periods. Exactly. And someone who is in that period of having a critical illness, they are in a situation of life or death. So having ha suddenly been given the financial means to seek um, treatment that might uh, either is not available in Canada or it may take them a long time to acquire that treatment, yeah. often it gives them the option to kind of circumvent that and, uh, and go to the front of the line, if you will. Exactly. Um, other, other things that I would see people or people would commonly express wanting to do, um, taking time off um, if they are, uh, priorities suddenly change when yeah. you are diagnosed with a critical illness. So having more time with loved ones, um, you're not probably wanting to be at the office as much no, if, no. You're, uh, if you suddenly have a significant life change. Yeah. Um, other things like um, vacations, travel, uh, leisure spending at that time. Yeah. Um, again, with the influx of uh, new money, somebody who uh, their priority might be a new Harley or it might be the, tr the trip of a lifetime right. or there may be something on their bucket list that they've always been putting off and that is a time where people wake up to the reality and, and want to have those experiences. So there are no constraints on what you can spend the money on. When the check is issued it's payable to the individual who had the policy and it's it's completely at your discretion what you uh, spend. There's no recording. There's no uh, right. there's no clawback provisions. No, 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 no limitations. You just take Not it at and, all. Uh, no. Yeah. And I mean, the nice thing is it, it'd be nice to have that money and be able to just focus on recovery treatment instead of worrying about you know yeah. paying the mortgage or having to work and and stuff like that. So I mean, it kind of helps in the recovery process in that term because it alleviates that stress too, right? So absolutely, yeah. yeah. Even if it's not to pay off, um, just to know that all your uh, your commitments and payments are going exactly. to be easily met for a window of time mm -hmm. will actually let people um, you know turn the focus on themselves and seeking the proper treatment. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so is there any kind of special features people should be aware of with regarding critical illness policy? Um, by fee like you mean like a benefit or? Uh, uh, like riders, sorry. Uh, riders yeah. or any additional things that can add on to just this base, basic straight critical illness policy? Yeah, so when you're, generally when you're purchasing a critical illness policy, you're looking for the, uh, the benefit amount or the face amount. Right. Um, that's, that's your real driving force, so that should be the reason in you making the decision to, uh, to get critical in this. Mm -hmm. um, insur different insurance companies do allow certain privileges or riders. Um, there is an extra cost attached to them. Um, I do recommend uh, you do talk to a licensed advisor yeah. if you are buying critical in this to walk you through not only the policy but the different, uh, different riders and features. 
The most commonly purchased one or the most commonly selected rider that I see is what's referred to as a return of premium rider. Okay. And uh, basically, with the return of premium rider, it is at an increased cost. But if you go beyond a specified window of time, normally it would be 15 years or at age 65 or 55, there'll be some strike point. Right. If you have not had a critical illness policy, or if you have not had a critical illness, sorry, you've kept your policy in force and your premiums have always been paid on time, you would have an option then to cancel your coverage at that time and recover all the money that you would have put in. Okay. Which is a lot of people like the sound of. Yes. You know? yes. Commonly when I explain to people, suddenly they want to know if they can do the same with their car insurance, their home insurance, <laughs> yeah. basically anything that they can think of with an insurance uh, sticker on it, yeah. they would like to do re return a premium on. It is something that's uh, quite unique to uh, critical illness. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's commonly selective. Whether it's right for you or not, again, that's something to, uh, to discuss with whoever's, uh, whoever's walking you through your policy. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds pretty nice to have a rider where you're paying and then even if you don't use it, you still have something at the end. It's not uh, uh, money for naught. You know, you still have, you get something back. So I can see that's, very, that's something that's uh, very appealing to, to potential uh, buyers. So I've heard people describe it as a forced savings plan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I guess is, a, is an odd way to work, look at it. But for someone who is a conservative investor and mm -hmm. someone who has run out of their regularly sheltered vehicles, the right. TFSA, the RRSP, having critical illness as a part of their portfolio to protect their assets and putting the return of premium on may make a lot of sense. Yeah. No, I mean, you bring up a good point too about investments, you know, a critical illness, if you don't have that coverage and you need that money, that's where you're going to get that from. You have to get that from your retirement savings, uh, you know, re getting a second mortgage on your home. You know, there's all these kind of factors, financial yep. things that are at risk, without having that, having that protection. So that's where that, uh, where that really comes in, is to protect your, your, your retirement and uh, your financial lifestyle, really. Yeah, the benefit you know that is paid, it can be twofold. I mean, for some people, it is because they wouldn't have the funds otherwise available. Yep. There are individuals who do have the funds available, but because having the critical illness um, may impact the retirement plans. Mm -hmm. They want the critical illness coverage to avoid dipping into those savings yep. and losing out on that potential market growth that would occur while they're waiting to repay the money that they utilize for their treatment. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I know you are a big supporter of CI. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be here today no, if I wasn't. No, of course yeah. not. Um, so uh, just tell me why, why is it you're a big supporter? Why are you a big supporter of CI? Um, right from the early days of me becoming aware of CI, it is a newer insurance product yeah. in, the, in Canada. Um, we're actually very lucky in Canada that we have guaranteed premiums. Mm -hmm. If you were to uh, purchase critical illness in other Western jurisdictions, um, they don't have those same privileges. Um, the insurance companies reserve the right to revoke or change the pricing. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so when you say like guaranteed or the premiums, it means that like if someone gets like a 10 year, 20 year term or level 75, that, that, that the premium doesn't change, right? Even beyond the terms yeah. though, that we have clauses to protect us. When we purchase that contract, what is outlined in that contract, that's our guaranteed schedule, okay. be it a term 10, be it any sort of renewals. Mm -hmm. um, it's, we're actually very privileged or very fortunate to have that uh, opportunity in Canada. It's not the same everywhere. Yeah. And uh, yeah, for myself, I, it's no secret, I am the owner of a couple policies on myself. Yeah. Um, I won't go into you know, the reasons, uh, reasons why I, uh, I chose to give myself coverage. Yeah. Um, it was a personal choice. Um, and yeah, I've, based on my job, even based on my family situation, I'm someone who's uh, witnessed firsthand what does happen mm -hmm. when critical illness occurs and understand the benefit of having that payout uh, yeah. occur at that time. And uh, I mean, <clears throat> I think just about anybody is, has, has experienced someone, has been touched by someone in their life, either someone they work with or family that, that's gone through it, that, that process of having a, a cancer, a critical illness. Uh, and there's statistics that prove that uh, yeah, we're, you know, before the age of 65, one, what was it, like one in four of people are going to have some kind of critical illness. So yeah. it, it's something that's pretty relevant and someone that has experienced. So to have that, to know what someone would go through be able to purchase that policy, protect them against that is, is, a, yeah. is, a, big, uh, is a big push. So, If we look through at claims experience um, by the, the different companies that offer uh, critical illness, 
the big four tend to be cancer, yeah. heart attack, stroke, and coronary artery bypass. Mm -hmm. um, with policies, there's often 30 different uh, covered conditions, right. yeah. but those are the big four. And to find someone uh, that you may know in Ottawa who uh, doesn't know someone who's been affected by one yeah. of those, it really is a, is a tough endeavor. Mm -hmm. So. No, uh, the reality is it can happen at any time, and uh, yeah, having the coverage will help prepare you for that. Yeah, exactly. Um, what, uh, just for you, what, what kind of uh, uh, the application process, just quickly, is it, is it similar to like a life insurance where they go through medical? There are some similarities, yeah. yes. Um, it, is a, it is a contract you're entering into with the insurance company. Yeah. Um, what your process will be will be affected by uh, what you decide to purchase. Okay. There are a number of plans which we would refer to as simplified issue or guaranteed issue. These are for people who may be a little bit older or may have um, some health issues. The application for those policies, uh, the application process is a lot less stringent. Okay. If you are healthy and you are able to go through the, the, the testing process, yeah. that is ultimately your most cost effective way of acquiring insurance. Generally, it all starts with a discussion with an advisor, yeah. a decision of what you're looking to purchase. Perfect. So we'll just have to cut and go to commercial break and uh, we'll be right back.